Ed Filer, a Savannah native, a prominent successful businessman, and an energetically involved civic leader, was a pioneer in the founding of the Leadership Savannah organization. Let's learn something about Leadership Savannah and Ed Filer. Ed, just what is Leadership Savannah? Leadership Savannah is a unique concept. Whose concept was this? Dr. Alfred Williams of Philadelphia. Dr. Williams had an outstanding career at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. He started out as a teacher, later became dean of the Wharton School, and eventually became chairman of the University of Pennsylvania. He also was elected to the wonderful position as chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. Now, while he was, as they say in Philadelphia, downtown at the Fed, he realized that there was a missing link, a big need in that community, because people on the way up did not seem to know each other. What did he do about this? So his idea was to bring young people together. And this was easy for the Federal Reserve Chairman to do. He gathered a group of businessmen, after all, this was the 1950s, so it's just male. And they started what was known as the Community Leadership Seminar of Philadelphia. And the idea was that this seminar would get people who were on the way up. They could be identified by the people who were older and in more important leadership positions. And they would have regular meetings for the purpose of number one, meeting each other, what later became networking, but nobody knew that at the time, and to be exposed to programs, substantive programs, that dealt with community issues, problems, and even possible solutions. However, he insisted, and I think quite properly so, on two restrictions. Number one, the group should stay out of local politics. And number two, there would be no media coverage of the programs. How did this get to Savannah? Dr. Williams and Sam Adler, a prominent merchant from Savannah, were roommates at the Wharton School in the early 20s. And they remained lifelong friends. They took a vacation together in Mexico in the early 1950s, and Dr. Williams told Mr. Adler about how successful the seminar was. Adler thought it was a great idea and asked Dr. Williams if he would help move it to Savannah. So they did. They agreed on that. Mr. Adler came back to Savannah and enlisted Hansel Hillier, who was a very prominent civic leader and president of the Savannah Gas Company. They agreed to cooperate and see if they could make the seminar work in Savannah. They enlisted a board of very, very outstanding people who agreed to raise the money and select the participants. When did it begin in Savannah? In June 1961, there was a media event at the old gold room of the old Hotel de Soda. This was the place where all the fancy balls and the introduction of society took place. Wonderful room overlooking Bull Street. And the class was introduced. Dr. Williams was there explaining his concept. And he was really sensational, very vibrant, and very convincing. The actual first meeting took place in November of 1961. And here's the program. Hmm. The Growing Metropolis, the Community Leadership Seminar of Savannah. The programs went on for a year. They had enlisted Dr. Fanning of the University of Georgia to prepare the programs. Dr. Fanning had gotten professors from the University of Georgia to pick the outstanding issues and to prepare papers research papers which were to be used by the class to prepare homework, if, if you will, to prepare for the various meetings. 
It continued annually, but in 1966, there was a problem. Actually, two problems. Number one, the group got involved in the mayor's race, broke Dr. Williams' rule. The mayor's race of 1966 was very divisive, and it really sort of split the group. Also, Dr. Fanning became disenchanted because there, was not, there wasn't really any diversity. No women, just a couple of blacks. So he just sort of quit. Took the idea to Atlanta, helped start Leadership Atlanta, and then helped start later Leadership Georgia. In 1968, the program quietly dissolved. Ed, what was your role? I was in the first leadership seminar in Savannah, and I really met people that I could not have met any other way. Because I was 26 years old, I'd just gotten back from my Wharton School graduation, and I served three years in the Navy. So this was a terrific way for me to meet people, and I'd, it, was, it was an extraordinary opportunity. And I, it enabled me to follow the issues and to stay in, try to stay informed about what was going on in Savannah, because I'd been away for a long time. In 1975, I was fortunate to be selected for the Leadership Georgia class, a, a year of great growth for me, because I traveled all over the state, met a lot of people, and learned about how leadership programming really works. At the end of that time, I was selected to be on the selection committee. And they had a grid to make sure that there was balance in the Leadership Georgia program. Blacks and whites, men and women, geographical distribution, and occupational distribution. So they really tried to have a balanced class. It was a great awakening for me. In 1976, some leaders of the Chamber of Commerce asked me to restart what would become named Leadership Savannah. I agreed to do this, but there must be balance in the program. That was very essential to avoid the problems of the 1960s. So there had to be people in the program, blacks and whites, men and women, people from different occupations, and people who could afford the tuition and people who couldn't. But more importantly, there had to be balance in the programming. People who make good decisions ha should have good information. So the program should show multiple sides of every issue. And this has become very important because that is not usually done. But the Leadership Savannah program, which has now been going successfully since 1976, tries to do that in every program. In the first year, I enlisted a board of directors who helped with the selections. But I did everything else. I planned the programs. I raised the money, and I even wrote the thank you notes. There are now 1,669 graduates of Leadership Savannah. Meanwhile, as Leadership Savannah continued, what was happening in Savannah? I call it a renaissance. Savannah began to blossom. We became a tourist destination. The Savannah College of Art Design opened in 1979. It now has 9,000 students plus 2,600 teachers and administrators stationed here. The other colleges in the area expanded and there was also the book, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, which attracted worldwide attention to Savannah, resulting in even more growth of tourism and we had some hotel, more hotels built, which attracted conventions. So, actually, during the 1980s, I traveled a lot. And I used to have to say, I'm from Savannah, Georgia. Now I just say, I'm from Savannah. And everybody I meet when I say that 
now says, gee, I want to come to Savannah or I want to expand my business there. It sounds like a wonderful place to live. This resulted in great synergy because the quality of life in Savannah attracted retirees who brought new visions and new examples of philanthropy and further enhanced the quality of life here. They really did a sensational job. Now, meanwhile, the leadership Savannah graduates found job opportunities through this growth because they were trained, they knew each other, and they were able to take advantage, if you will, of the time and the energy they'd put into their work in Leadership Savannah. Leadership Savannah graduates became a great resource. They ran for elected office, they had the network, and they also were a great pool for businesses and nonprofit organizations to go to for board positions. What's the future of Leadership Savannah in its second half century? Oh, that's easy. Everywhere I go, I hear complaints about lack of communication. And it's very, very widespread. Blacks cannot communicate effectively with whites. Republicans don't communicate effectively with Democrats. And the most interesting thing is the religions, the, the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims. They're not having trouble with the, the other sect. They're having trouble with each other because the, the historic versus the contemporary. That's going on in the Jewish religion, it's going on in the Muslim religion, and it's going on in the Christian religion. So Leadership Savannah graduates are trained to listen to all sides. That's the perfect way to get conversations going. So the result will be cooperation rather than confrontation. Take each issue, discuss it. The Leadership Savannah alumni know, they know who to call, they know who to find out, get straight information. They know how to bring people together. This can result in a wonderful opportunity for Savannah to flourish and excel. Dr. Williams would be very proud of how his concept has really, really worked in Savannah, the small town that he questioned whether or not it could be done as well as he did it in Philadelphia. So Leadership Savannah will become the catalyst for Savannah to grow and flourish.